Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bianca and I'm so glad for you guys to be here. So today, you guys know that um, a couple of weeks ago, let me see, how long ago was them videos? Let me check really quickly. I was doing Reddit stories. I think I did maybe one or two videos or was it just one? Yeah, it was just one. <laughs> <laughs> it was just one video that I did, and I remember saying in the video that I really liked doing uh, the Reddit stories. So, um, I could have done, like, the editing like I did on that video, but I didn't feel like doing it that way this time. I was like, let me just use my little stream yardy, you know, my little stream yardy yardy, <laughs> my little stream yard, and we gonna do what it do. Okay, maybe for the next one, I'll probably do it, but we just gonna use StreamYard for this one. So, today, if you look at Reddit stories, there are stories called Am, Am I the Asshole? So, basically, they give like little stories, they tell you know what's going on, and then they ask people for advice. So, since I have a podcast called call center baddie podcast i was like let me find a reddit story that is dealing with the call center so welcome to am i the asshole on call center baddie aka i am bianca's youtube channel <laughs> um i am going to do other stories um, outside of call center i'm going to try to find um some call, call center reddit uh stories and then um, also regular ones as well. And just comment down below, what would you say to this person? So, as you see by the title of the story, it says, Am I the asshole for wanting to quit my micromanaged work-from-home job while juggling family health issues? Okay, so let me go to my other browser really quickly. All right, so here it goes. It says, Hey, Reddit. I'm at my wit's end, and I really need some advice. I, 35 female, work as a call center worker for a major company. And ever since we transitioned to remote work, things have been a nightmare. My manager is a total control freak and seems to thrive on micromanaging every aspect of our work. He constantly monitors our calls, nitpicks every little detail, and even has the audacity to call me out for taking a bathroom break. To make matters worse, our system frequently locks us out for no apparent reason, causing delays and frustration for both us and the customer. Despite my repeated complaints, management hasn't done anything to fix the issue. I'm at a point where I'm seriously considering quitting, but here's the kicker. I have three young kids to support, and my husband has been dealing with some health issues lately. The thought of leaving my job terrifies me, but I'm so tired and annoyed that I don't know how much longer I can take this. What should I do is there anything I can do to improve the situation or am I better off throwing in the towel and finding something else and we do have updates from this story so um, I'm also going to read the updates as well but we're going to start off with the first the main original post okay so she works at the call center and I guess they got transitioned to remote remote you know working from home um, as you guys know, with call centers, you can either work in the office or you can work from home. So I don't know. There was no backstory on this on why they got transitioned to work from home. It could have been because of the pandemic, um, or whatever. So now second paragraph, she says that her manager is a total control freak and he thrives on micromanaging every aspect of their work. He monitors the calls, nitpicks every little detail. It even has the audacity to call her out for taking a bathroom break. Now, one, do managers monitor calls like QA? Yes, they do. Um, a lot of people ask, do the managers listen to the calls? They do listen to the calls. Um, usually they listen to the calls when you are doing a one-on-one -on -one session. Um, that's when they're usually listening to the calls. Um, you know, they usually listen with you before the session 
or while you're in the session. It just depends. Or if you send them the case number and you tell them, hey, can you listen to the call? Usually those are kind of really the only times they listen to the call um, like that. Or if QA flags something, those are probably the only ways they'll listen to the calls. Um, so managers does monitor the calls. So technically him constantly monitoring their calls is kind of a part of his job description to listen to the calls as well. Uh, so QA is not the only people that's going to listen to your calls. So if you're working call center, get that out your head. QAs is not just the only people who are listening to your calls. Now, nitpicking every detail. Um, I kind of need this person to expand on that. And what I mean by that is what details are they nitpicking? Is it nitpicking the calls, how they're doing stuff? Um, because you do have managers, you know, sometimes they do it in a nice way. And then you have ones that are like, you need to do it like that, 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 that. Because I did it like that, 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 that. So usually, you know, there's some managers like that. Um, so I need more expansion on that. And then even has the audacity to call me out for taking a bathroom break. Okay, let's talk about call center and bathroom breaks. Y'all ready? So, and this is just my experience. This is not everybody's experience, okay? This is just mine, okay? This is just my experience. So, when I was working call center... Mind you, I've worked through costs and jobs. Um, you have the jobs that care about you going to the bathroom so much. And then you have the jobs that don't care um, about you, that do care um, about you going. Um, so my first cost and job, they didn't really care how many times you went to the bathroom. Um, <laughs> if you had to go to the bathroom, you just put it in like a certain, um, what was it? a certain ox. So they'll give you like an ox number uh, at my first job. So it was like ox, I think it was ox eight um, that you had to use to go to the bathroom. So I'll use that. Nobody ever said anything to me about going to the bathroom or nothing like that. They didn't care. As long as you did your job correctly, they did not care. They're not going to stop you from going to the bathroom. They even told us in training, we're not going to stop you to go to the bathroom. You have to go to the bathroom. You have to go to the bathroom. If you're just going to the bathroom to take a break from the calls, you can do that. But we're not going to stop you from doing that. So um, I kind of wished... <laughs> I, I would have actually stayed at that job if I could have worked from home. I mean, you could work from home, but that's a whole nother story. That's a I'm gonna do a story time on that or talk about that in another podcast. On if I could have worked from home, I would have stayed at that job. But um <laughs> but some jobs they don't care. Now I've had had jobs like my healthcare job where they brought up my healthcare job and my last job I just worked, which was my tech uh, working for like a tech company. Um, those, they cared. They cared. They monitored you how many times you go, how long you were gone. Y'all, they got it. I mean, it was so annoying. It was so annoying. It's like, and plus I was working from home with those jobs. My job that I worked in the office, which was my first job, they didn't care. But when I was working from home, they was nitpicking every single day. I'm like, damn, when I was working in the damn office, they wasn't even nitpicking like that. But once I started working from home, these work from home companies, they will nitpick every single thing. How long you're in the bathroom? They was like, okay, you can only be in the bathroom for two minutes. I said, who? Two minutes? Baby, I'm not rushing. I'm not rushing. So they definitely will call you out for the bathroom break. Now, she said that their system frequently locks out for no apparent reason, which caused delays and frustrations. Now, at my last two jobs, which was the healthcare project and working on the tech project, um, number one, let's start with the healthcare. When I was working in healthcare. That job would literally freeze, freeze in the middle of the call. And I would have to make something up like, 
Um, yeah, the system is just loading that information. If you could please give me one moment. Literally five minutes, I'll be like, can I just put you on brief hold so I can go ahead and get some more information for you? I would literally have to lie, talk like that. <laughs> like, I would lie. And <laughs> because a lot of these customers, they would get annoyed because, you know, what's taking so long? Now, with the tech job, it had issues when we even, the system had issues when we started, baby. It was, we had to do this thing called flush, and it was so annoying because you had to close out, log out of here, do this. Ugh, it was just too much. It was too much. It would be frustrating because sometimes the system will literally and my tech job, you had to call the customer back. My healthcare job, you didn't have to call them back if the line disconnected. But the tech job, you did. Um, the line, the whole line would just drop. Like, the whole thing would just drop. And it was just so annoying. I used to just be like, come on, man. Come on. And then we had to notate. Then we have to call back. And then if they didn't answer, we had to write that whole They did not answer the phone. It was just too much. And I think it took like a couple of weeks. I think one of the older workers said that the problem was happening with that for a while. And so when I came there, it was like maybe a month. I don't know. It took a while for them to fix that. It was really annoying because I remember being in meetings and everybody used to bring it up because it was so annoying. So annoying. Um, so she says that she's at the point to consider quitting, but she has three young children to support and her husband is dealing with some health issues. So there are some people who have to, they can just up and quit, you know, they can just up and quit. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I've been one of those people. I am one of those people that just up and quit. Um, but I will say this is a little bit different for her because she has three kids. And I mean, well, my last job, it took me a while to actually quit because it was just so much going on. And I'll do a story time on that as well. Okay. With receipts. <laughs> um, Like I said, my podcast, make sure when you're working from home, keep those receipts handy, baby handy okay but um and her husband is going through health issues i will say this before you actually quit see if you can talk to hr make sure you guys talk to hr now even though i will say this because i am in business school right now hr is usually not for the employees they're usually for the company but it doesn't hurt to speak to hr it doesn't hurt. Not all HRs are terrible. Not all people who work for HR is terrible. Um, but I would say at least try to speak to HR and see where you can get to. And while you're doing that, look for other jobs. Look for other jobs while you're... I know a bunch of people right now. I'm working from home looking for jobs while they're working another their current job. I've done it. I've done it. I've done it. Be on the clock and just looking for a job. Or be outside the clock and look for a job. Like, look for a job while you're working and put in applications. Put in applications. So, that's my advice. So, now we're going to go to the first update because I think it's two updates that this person has gave. So, this person put... Um, while I am overwhelmed by the outpouring support and advice from everyone, thank you all for taking the time to read my post and offer your insights. After taking some time to weigh my options and consider my family's needs, I've decided to take a proactive approach to addressing the issues at work. First, I've scheduled a meeting with my manager to discuss my concerns in a calm and professional manner. I plan to outline the impact of his micromanaging on my morale and productivity and suggest constructive solutions for improving our working relationship. Good, because I would do the same thing. I would do the same thing. I would schedule a meeting. One thing about me at my last job, 
uh, my old manager would tell you, I'm quick for an email or say, or when we had our one and ones to bring something up. Talk to those managers. Talk to those managers. It is important because you are working with them closely. Um, she says, additionally, I've reached out to HR to escalate the ongoing system issues and advocate for a more reliable platform that doesn't disrupt our workflow. I've also connected with my coworkers to gather support and present a united front in addressing these concerns with management. Now that is good. If you can get coworkers on your side, that is amazing. She says, while the thought of quitting still lingers in the back of my mind, I'm determined to exhaust all possible avenues before making such a drastic decision. My family's well-being is my top priority, and I'm committed to finding a solution that allows me to balance work and home life effectively. Thank you again to everyone who's offered their support and advice. Your encouragement has given me the strength to advocate for myself and seek positive change in my professional life. Here's to hoping for a brighter future. Yes! I am loving that first update. I'm loving that first update. Um, yeah, talk to HR. Um, have a meeting with the manager. And here's a pro tip. Talk to the manager above your manager. Okay? Because I've done it. I've done it. I had a situation before I left my last job where I told the manager above the manager, I said, this is unacceptable. This is unacceptable unacceptable this is unacceptable so talk to your manager that is above the manager okay talk to that person too so now we have uh, the last update so let me go ahead and get that hold on okay she put, I appreciate all the support and encouragement from everyone here. Unfortunately, things have taken a turn for the worse since my last update. Despite my efforts to address the issues with my manager and escalate the system problems to HR, nothing has improved. If anything, the situation has only deteriorated. My manager's micromanaging has become even more unbearable to the point where it feels like I can't even breathe without him scrutinizing my every move. And the system glitches, they become so frequent that it's nearly impossible to get through a single call without encountering a problem. To make matters worse, my workload has increased and my coworkers are feeling the strain as well. We're all on edge, stressed out, and struggling to keep up with the demands of our job. On top of all this, my husband's health has taken a turn for the worse, and the medical bills are piling up. I feel like I'm drowning in stress, and the thought of quitting my job ter terrifies me. But I don't know how much longer I can take this. I'm at a loss. What should I do? Is there any hope of salvaging this situation? Or am I better off cutting my losses and finding a way out of this nightmare? So, it has taken a turn for the worse with the third update. Um, I did try to see if there was another update, but it was no update after this one. So, well, I will say this. There was something somebody said to me. Oh, my God. I forgot the name that you can report. If you guys know what I'm talking about, comment down below. Because it's in my head, but I just don't remember the name. But I know you can report, like, the company to this place or something like that comment down below if y'all know what i'm talking about um so you can either do that or um like i stated talk to find the head above the head you know talk to somebody that's very higher up even above the other two managers the manager your manager the manager your manager's manager Talk to your manager's manager's manager, manager. <laughs> Talk to them and continue trying to find jobs. Try to find a job. Try to find a job. Um, it, even if you do get fired, make sure you document that evidence. Document that evidence. Document it. That evidence will be extremely important because... If you file for unemployment, um, that can help you win your money in case unemployment don't. Um, well, first, you can submit all that evidence before you go uh, in case they, what is it? 
you can submit <laughs> you can submit that evidence um before you know while you're applying and if they decline your unemployment and then you can get on the phone with the judge and um present all that evidence plus more um see if you can find if your co-workers and you can create a call center union or something like that at your job i feel like there needs to be a lot more unions and call centers um i believe that's very important but um yeah so that's all i wanted to say and um this story i really hope uh this story is months ago and i found it and i haven't you know, seen an update from it, but hopefully that person, um, everything went well for them. Um, that's the advice that I would give, um, paper trail. Um, I would record the company. I know lots of work from home companies. They don't want you having your phone near you, but I would record the conversations between the manager and you. Um, I would also take pictures of the chat. Um, I know some companies, they don't want you taking pictures of their equipment, but in order for you to, um, have evidence, I would take pictures. I would take pictures. And I will also have a follow-up email, um, a follow-up email after you have meetings with managers and HR and things like that. Um, and make sure they reply so you can have a time, time stamp and time and everything. Um. Also, I do, I haven't used them before. I haven't used them before. Hold on, let me find. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I haven't used them before, but uh, maybe when I get my new job, uh, if I get a new job, I will use them. This company is called Cagebird HR. Um, this company is a independent HR that protects you and not the company. So they're on your side and not the company's side. So they are independent HR company. Um, check them out. Um, I haven't used them, but, uh, I definitely will use them whenever I get into like another job situation or anything. So yeah, it's Cagebird HR on instagram so check out their um pages i've seen reviews from them um this is a black owned i believe this is a black owned company yeah i believe this is a black owned company so i would definitely um check them out um and get someone on your side and speak to them so yes you guys that's all i wanted to say for this video um if you have any advice for this person, comment down below. I'm definitely going to do another one of these. Hopefully, I can find another work from home one. If not, I'll just pick another one. But, yeah, I hope you guys like this video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your post notifications so every time I upload a video, you guys will be notified. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.